Bats are actually our friends. I mean, they're very important out there, eating tons and tons of insects um, that cause agricultural damage to all of our agricultural crops. So bats may seem a little bit scary, but um, when you think about what they do for, for our food source, um, they're a very essential part of that agricultural ecosystem. And we have to have bats in order to produce industrial food. Since 2006, um, bat the, the fungus that causes bat white nose syndrome has killed over six million bats, um, which is really devastating to the bat population. It infects seven different types of hibernating bats um, throughout the United States and Canada. And the impact of this is huge. It's enormous, um, especially to the agricultural industry. So bats are the number one source of insectivores. They eat all the bad agricultural pests. Um, and it's estimated, one of the recent papers that came out estimates anywhere between $4 billion and $50 billion in economic loss because of bat white nose syndrome. If we let the bats go, which if we don't try, they're most likely the insect, the small hibernating um, bats are probably going to go um, extinct or there will only be small populations and pockets that are kind of isolated for some geographical region. Uh, if that happens, of course, crop insects are going to go up. Think about mosquitoes, all the uh, West Nile that we have, those rates are probably going to go up. So even beyond the agricultural uh, problems that we're going to have, we're going to have human-related problems with, with increased disease. The bat white nose syndrome was first discovered in New York in 2006 and it's moved south and east since that in the last nine years and it's presently known to occur in 25 states throughout the United States and also five Canadian provinces. The prevailing idea of how it came to North America was uh, by a caver. So there was cavers in Europe, they came over, probably got into the cave in New York in 2006 and it spread from New York. Uh, outward and eastward and westward. Bat white nose syndrome is caused by a, it's a fungal disease that affects the bats um, during their hibernation period. Um, and what it does is the fungus um, gets onto the bat muzzles, the bat skin, um, and the bat ears, and it basically just irritates them um, and wakes them up during their hibernation, um, especially in late January and early February. Um, and so the bats wake up out of hibernation and they start to forage and look for insects and of course there are no insects in midwinter. Um, so what that does is deplete all of their resources and they end up dying. We think that the fungus is pretty much um, living on the keratin of the bats and basically eating their skin. So you'll find bats that have big holes um, in their skin and basically that would wake you up if something was eating a big hole in your skin. <laughs> Basically, this fungus only infects, only infects the bats during hibernation because the body temperatures of bats are too high during the summer. Once they come out of hibernation, their body temperatures rev up, and once their body temperatures rev up, this fungus will, will die. Uh, so they're basically free from infection during the summer, and as soon as they go back into hibernating, uh, if the fungus is in the cave, it can get back on the bat and reinfect them the, the next year. Well, there have been several papers that recently came out on um, trying to treat these bats. Um, no one's found a magic bullet yet, so there is no magic cure for this. Um, our lab was one of these that came out with a chemical um, that is able to retard the fungus and knock it back, basically. It doesn't necessarily kill the fungus, um, but it knocks it back. And this is a trans-transfarnessal. <coughs> um, and what happens is there's other species of fungi, especially yeast, that naturally produce this chemical. Um, and if, if somehow we can get those fungi to grow on bats, maybe they can produce a chemical that would knock back the fungus and help them survive a little bit more. So 
that's that's kind of the trick is finding something that will target this specific fungus but not harm the other fungi or bacteria that occur in the case. But the good thing at least with the, the trans transfarnesol is that it really does give hope that there are native fungi, native bacteria already in the caves that are capable of limiting this fungus and we just need to find, we need the research and the people to go out and try to find them. I don't think it'll just be one magic bullet, it'll be several of them that come together to, to hopefully um, provide some sort of treatment or, or even a cure um, for this devastating disease of bats.